Hi, welcome to prenatal yoga. Uh, my name is Katie and you reached us in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at our studio in wellness. And today's practice is going to be at all levels. Everybody is welcome with all trimesters. Um, we're going to try to make it the least proporific yoga class. Um, so hopefully things that you'll be able to use within your practice, but then also carry into your everyday life. So we're going to be learning also just some basic strategies of what it is to kind of carry the child within to make sure that you are strong, to make sure that you're stable, and to make sure that you've got this, that you maintain your confidence throughout your pregnancy. So also know that there's going to be some mindfulness and some breath tools in here as well. So this is really a practice for motherhood. So just know that any prenatal classes that you take with me are things that are going to set the tone. They're going to be questions or mindfulness practices that really set the tone of who you are as a mom going forward. Um, so go ahead and just find whatever kind of seat that you would like to. Um, usually anytime the hips are over the knees is nice uh, with all different sorts of hip pains out there, whether it's dull and achy, sharp and shooty. Go ahead and have a seat on your chair if you want to. Uh, otherwise, sometimes I know it can just feel really comfortable just sitting on your feet as well, too. Um, or taking a blanket or a block, or if you're at home, a pot of sorts, and sitting up on your legs as well. Okay? So just taking your regular breath, and let's close our eyes as we do with most yoga classes. I'm just going to roll the head around. You know, the things that you deal with in your practice again are ways to practice the situations that come up in your life. And then rolling around the wrists, pulling out those fingers. Take it easy if you've got any of that mystical prenatal tendonitis that can often come up. I'm going to be elbows too, get up the shoulders, just start stretching it out, waving up the body, and then rubbing the belly, saying hi to the little one inside, and then rubbing up the back, lower back, and the hip area, and rubbing up the legs. Rubbing up the legs, and let's go ahead and just kind of a little bit of nice rubbing of the feet too. Nice little soft care here in the beginning. <clears throat> you just know it doesn't matter if you've got any sort of swollen ankles or feet. A lot of the yoga practice can help relieve the intensity of it as well as prevent it, like most things. With prenatal and pregnancy symptoms, a lot of them are origins and spaces of mystery. It kind of depends on which route of medicine you like to practice, whether it's Chinese or Ayurveda or Western medicine. They've all got their theories on where these prenatal symptoms come from. You just kind of got to pick a lane and do the best that you can. <sighs> So finding a nice seat. You said hi to the body. Closing your eyes. We're going to start with a cooling breath today. So it's called Shitali or Shikali. And first and foremost, all of the breath begins down into your belly, into your own belly. Okay? So just remember that even though your little one's taking lots of space, you still can be capable of taking a really nice, big, deep breath. Okay, this is going to help build and cultivate your labor breath, the breath that you use for labor. Okay. So going ahead, and if if you're new in your pregnancy, hands to the front of the pelvis, kind of right where the little one is at. If you're a little further along. If it's comfortable for you, you can take your hands to your sides, to your hips, and maybe you can feel the expansion of the breath happening in that space too, okay? If you don't feel anything, just have that visualization that your breath is going all the way down into your belly and down into the pelvis, into the gut space, okay? 
So let's start there. Real deep, long breaths down into the belly. And for the nose or the mouth. Cooling breath, a sheep along the breath. It's going to help you, especially in hot summer months, in moments that you feel kind of hot and toxic inside. It's going to help ease the digestive system. It's going to move along the bile. It's going to kind of alleviate, remedy any sense of colic within yourself digestive system and also helps to uh, what they say is clean and purify the blood and obviously with breath practices increasing the amount of oxygen which especially during pregnancy is incredibly needed and a wonderful remedy to a lot of things going on psychologically and emotionally as well so a lot of breath is going to be that connection the connection between your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul. And it's also going to firm up that connection that you have with your little one inside. Just that sense of life force about both of you sharing the same space. So this is done in two different ways. One, if you can stick out your tongue and then curl your tongue like a taco. Or if that's not possible, you open up your lips and you press your teeth together, okay? So either one of those postures for the breath in, when you close the mouth and then you exhale, the longer that you practice this, you can actually feel the heat moving out through the nose. So this is a heat pool exchange happening within your body, okay? So let's do some rounds together and then I'll be silent so we can practice individually. So either tongue into a taco, or pressing the teeth together. Bring the breath all the way down into your belly and close the mouth. And try to find that heat inside and let move it up through the back of the throat, out through the nose. Again, curl the tongue or press the teeth. Close the mouth, exhale that heat out of the nose. And if it's shikari through the teeth, bring it down your belly, close your mouth, heat out through the nose. Okay? So breath in through the mouth and then out through the nose. So go ahead, let's take a few breaths. I will mind the time. Enjoy your breath. in on your inhale, on your in-breath, and then play around with the placement of the tongue in the mouth as you close the mouth and allow the heat to come out. Nice big long breaths in, and long breaths out.
we feel, now that we've practiced, really feel that cool air moving into the mouth, down the esophagus, down the throat, bypassing the lungs to fill up that cool breath way down into the belly, down into the guts. And then again, closing the mouth, find the placement of the tongue where you can feel that excessive heat rising up from the depths of you to move up and out through the nose. Okay? Sometimes that little one can be pressed on the diaphragm, that the breath can be a little tough. Take your break as you need to and then get back into it. A few more rounds. Release your breath. Let's invite that space of intuition. So take your fingers and just rub up your third eye space. The direction that you go initially is the direction that the wheel within you likes to go. Some scholars say that the wheels already have a predetermined direction. So if you want to test that theory, see what happens, that subtle sensation as you rub in the opposite direction. And now other hand to the top of the head and just rub out the top of the head. If it feels real good and juicy just to get all up into your hair, just go for it. This is your practice. Whether you're doing this at home or with other people, just do whatever feels good for you. <sighs> okay, that's what I'm about to say. So, if you're coming out to standing, it's nice to kind of get one foot in front, okay? And use that breath. We always tend to hold that breath as we're coming out, okay? So keep breathing here as you move, okay? So take one of your blankets or beach towels or whatever you've got, even maybe a little couch cushion, okay? And if you have a chair in front of you, um, again, depending on how far along you are, you might want to use a chair. But we're going to start working at those leg cramps that you may or may not have started experiencing. Okay, again, a nice little natural phenomenon, even though all sorts of different uh, medicines have their treatments, they have their spaces of origin. Okay, so go ahead, take your toes on the front of the blanket and your heel is back. Okay, so just start with one and then put your weight into that leg and then come off of it for a second. Okay, so let's just Check in with the body, okay? And then other side, okay? We got a lot, as baby girls, we get a lot of weight, and even just as the relaxing starts moving through your body, your hips start to do some amazing things, okay? And so every yoga practice is something totally different, okay? So we always gonna just take a nice little subtle check in. So now when you're ready, go ahead and take both toes on the front, Okay. Again, if you don't have a chair, maybe you've got something that you can hold on to, to the sides, okay? And let's just kind of walk it out. So kind of side to side, so bending one knee, straightening the other, and just see how it goes, okay? Hold your arms out as you need to. And make sure that you have a slight little bend in your knee, okay? When you start to get comfortable with it, when your weight is really shifting, Okay, so let's take some trial runs here, okay? 
So if you're holding on to your chair, maybe see if you can release your hold. Recognize that you need to have a little bend in your knee, just stretching out any of this your shift in your calves, okay? Something is happening here as well too. We'll get to that in a moment, but just know that there's a lot of negotiation and communication happening in your hips. And it's gonna be further more here as we start to move the arms, okay? So if you have to keep marching side to side as you reach your arms out and up, constantly convincing your body with each new posture. And then taking the arms way out to the side and down, okay? So sweeping those arms forward and up, raising those fingertips through the air, and then back and down. If you fall back, that's okay. Just come right back into your position on up, learning how to shift the body so that we can prepare versus react. So out and up. Take breaths, open up that chest, arms down. Okay, preparing the body here, balancing the body out. <sighs> One more time. Okay, and let's go ahead and just stretch to the side here. So just take one arm and just stretch over to the side. So for a side view, my feet are up on the blanket. I'm just easily stretching over to the side. Be very cautious here, okay? Give yourself about 30 to 40% in this posture, okay? And this is gonna to help to prevent any diastasis, any of the separating of the tummy muscles that does come naturally in pregnancy, okay? Most people, do get some sort of degree of diastasis, okay? So let's just make sure that this, again, is a preparation for motherhood. Okay, making sure that nothing in your yoga practice creates any unnecessary diastasis. So inhaling, so let's use those side tummy muscles right here, and then squeeze them together as you come on up. Okay, shift around as you need to, other arm, up, and over. So as you move over to the side, find those same short little, or long, short, whatever, uh, side muscles here, watching them lengthen. And again, just give yourself 30 to 40% here. Okay, so shorten up those side body muscles. Bring yourself to center. Okay. Let's go ahead, kick away that blanket. And again, if you can go up against a wall or a chair here, okay, we're going to find this nice big old shoulder stretch. Okay. And so go ahead and take your elbows to your chair. Okay. And it's going to take a little bit of convincing wiggle room. So you can either come into it from above or you can come into it from below, right? So go ahead and just take your hands to your elbows and weasel your head down in between your arms. <sighs> so that you're in a nice half fold. <sighs> Stretching out the long muscles of the back. So let this just be about the shoulders, the head and neck right now. And this is also excellent for breastfeeding. Because so much of your body is curled forward once the little one is born. Just nervous not to drop the baby. Nervous that the baby might roll out of your arms. All of these fears are completely normal. And so that's why this practice again is preparing your mind so that you can be confident in your actions. So allow this nice big extension in your hips, like somebody's pulling your hips back behind you 
to relax and lengthen out the undersides of your arms. Check in with the grasp of your hands to your arms or against the wall. Nice big breaths. Confident in your breath to be confident in your actions. And go ahead and slowly start to rise on up and walk forward a little bit. Oh, and this nice sense of spaciousness about to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's come on down, lying on down here. And then we're going to come into a line shiva pose, okay, for needle style. So come on down, <clears throat> and you're going to extend your bottom arm, and you're going to bend up your bottom leg. If you're further along in your pregnancy, take a blanket and rest it underneath your tummy. And we're gonna go ahead and we're going to bring this top knee in towards the body. And then we're gonna extend that foot on up, okay? So extend it on up, okay? Hold on to your pant leg. If you have a strap, you can hold on to your strap. Otherwise, you can take your first two fingers around your toe and really just give it. Okay, and then I want you to fluctuate between pointing the toes and then the flexing the heel. So pointing the toes, flexing the heel. Pointing the toes, flexing the heel. Okay. And then relax for a moment. Now let's get the head into place. So go ahead, come on up to your elbow. Place your hand to cradle your head, okay? And your elbow needs to be kind of out straight in front of your shoulder, okay? It's very easy to kind of crouch forward here. We want to use this prop in order to kind of create some space in the shoulder and the neck. Again, very helpful with breastfeeding. So go ahead, find your positioning, and then go ahead and let's find our Lying Shiva pose here, and do as you need to with this top leg. Okay, work out any of the tensions in your own body. Nice big breaths here. And really try to kind of open up, maybe swing this leg very slightly back. Okay, so you're accessing the space around the groin, you're inviting some space, okay? Inviting some space, making space for a little one to join us. Also, a posture of vulnerability. Generally, anytime the legs are open, it's the sense of vulnerability that joins us. So just know, that again, this practice is allowing you to practice what it is to feel vulnerable in a safe space, in a safe way. Just one more thing to make you confident in your motherhood. And relaxing the leg, and a nice little thigh stretch here. So just tape that top leg back. Oh, she really. Allow that top shoulder to open back. Feel that knee just pressing straight out from the hip. If you have any knee issues, you can always flex that top foot, press that ankle into the hand. <sighs> okay, bringing the knees a little bit further up towards the tummy, towards the chest. And now take this top foot, place it to the ground in front of your knee, release the arm that was under your head. Then we're gonna find a nice little twist back with the upper body. And 
So shift as you need to. You just know that this is a nice gentle twist, second most gentle twist for the Queen of Mama's growing body. And twist. Okay, and then it's up to you if you want to just roll on back to do the other side. You know what we're doing, so you don't have to watch me here. Okay. So let's roll back to the other side. And let's just figure out the leg situation first. So Bringing that top leg in now and then extending it up. Okay, and then pointing the toe, pressing out to the heel, toe, heel, toe, heel. <sighs> yep, and if, you, if you feel wobbly, bend that bottom knee even more. Take up some space here, okay? I know a lot of times with yoga, we think that we have to be within the boundaries of our yoga mat. It's just a false boundary, right? Just a little bit of cushion underneath you. So extend your bottom leg wherever you need to. And then let's get the head into place. So allow the shoulder and the neck to catch up to you here for a moment, recognizing all of this space, nice little stretch in the side of the neck. Okay. And then go ahead, grabbing your big toe or your strap. And again, invite space. Lift that chin a little bit so you've got some space at the throat center, at the heart space, and just dance around this top leg. Just kind of figure it out. And then we hold. Shoulders down away from the ears. Breath in to create space. Breath out, making space. And releasing. Nice little thigh stretch here. So look down and check to make sure that the knee is right out in front of that hip socket. Okay, we don't want that knee up. The chin lifted space at the front of the chest and the throat. And then let's go ahead and twist. So top foot in front, bottom knee, shift around the upper body. I suggest crawling your shoulders towards me, towards my voice or forward of your body and then going ahead and extending your top arm back, okay? And if it doesn't feel good on one side versus the other, listen to that cue, okay? Just back off a little bit because it might just take this side to catch up to you. And untwist. 
And then just take a breath on your side here. And then whenever you're ready, go ahead and come on up to all fours. <clears throat> okay. So blanket underneath the knees if you've got some sensitive knees. Again, any sort of tendonitis or wrist issues, go ahead and either just fold up your yoga mat. Okay. And we're gonna be here for a little bit, so I want you to be truthful with yourself because we're gonna practice something that is going to take into effect pretty much every moment that you have from here on out, okay? In your everyday life as well as in your yoga practices, okay? It's the sense of carry and lift, okay? So, we, if you've practiced yoga before, we've got our classic cat cow, right? So the spine moves up, the spine moves down, you know, whether or not the origin starts at the tailbone or if it starts at the head, okay? With prenatal yoga, Imagine that your baby is born or that you're carrying a baby, okay? So we've got this sense where it's usually, usually two hands, right? So we've got some sort of carry, kind of like you're carrying something in your arm, and then you've got this lift underneath the tushy, okay? So not so much, you know, an infant, um, you know, still has the sense of carry and lift, um, you know, but thinking more along the lines of like a one-year-old, a two-year-old, maybe even your toddler, okay, hanging out on your hip. So it's a sense of carry and lift. So now envisioning your little one inside of your tummy, it's the same reaction that I want you to have with your body so that you can be strong, okay? So that your hips, that your back, that your whole posture can be maintained throughout your pregnancy, okay? So what I want you to do is to find this sense where all of your tummy muscles, for all intents and purposes, are kind of moving in towards the spine, okay? To move that kiddo in towards your spine a little bit and then lift, and you're gonna do so with those, with those cable muscles, with the root, okay? With your pelvic muscles, kind of like you have to urinate but there isn't a bathroom, okay? So this is gonna help you out, especially two mamas for all those kiddos that are hanging out in your bladder, okay? It's going to help you as much as you possibly can. It is a thing, okay? So it's a sense of carry and lift, okay? Two very subtle things, but when you put them together, you just feel rock solid, okay? You feel firm, or the foundation for that firmness is building, okay? So we're going to have that. We're going to carry and lift through all of our practices from here on out, okay? So even when you're in your tabletop here, okay? Already, move my shirt up to the side. Already, instead of that tummy hanging down, right? Which we just, just, just give into, okay? Let's carry and then lift, okay? So I'll show you again, in case you need to get up to the screen, you can see the difference clearly right here, okay? So my tummy is just relaxed, okay? I'm channeling the two little ones that have joined us into our family here. So relaxing my tummy, so I'm going to carry, okay, so I'm going to carry the kiddo and then I'm going to lift, okay, so carry and lift. See the tiny little difference and how it's very effective, okay. So there's something to be said about that root chakra that does something to your hips, to your tailbone, to the security, safety, and firmness and fortitude about your hips, okay? This is gonna build confidence in every single walking step that you take, okay? So now let's carry and lift a few more times here as we now move into our cat cow, okay? So carry and lift, okay? So keep that motion going is now you try to kind of relax your spine down. It's a very different sensation. It can be quite difficult, so just maintain that focus on carrying and lifting is now you move your spine up towards the ceiling. Drop that chin. The root is already engaged, so there's not much you need to do to that tailbone. Okay, now keep the carry and lift going inside of your body as you move into your cow posture. You're not gonna go as far as you usually do, 
Okay, this is where prenatal yoga is very different than regular yoga. So exhaling into your cat, inhaling into your cow. Some yogis believe that this is the function that the tummy, the pelvis, and just the physical body is supposed to have within your cat house anyway. So why not take their word for it and just start practicing here? You know you want to drop that tummy. <laughs> you know you want to. Okay. Just keep going. Stay with me here. Stay with me here. Carry and lift. Carry and lift. Okay. The more you do it, the more second nature it will become. But then you can start kind of opening up the front of the chest a little bit more. Maybe lifting that chin a little bit. Maybe finding a little bit more benefit moving into that upper back. Carrying and lifting, carrying and lifting, carrying and lifting. And then go ahead, drop on back to your heels or come down into a child's pose. Oh, right. So again, also great practice for postpartum and for postnatal. About seven, eight months postpartum. And that's a lot of hard work even for myself too, okay? Okay, so let's come on up to our knees and we're gonna come into a nice lunge. So again, let's carry and lift. So the whole process of sliding that foot forward. And if you need your chair handy, okay? Have a chair handy if you need to here, okay? So we're gonna curl those back toes under. Okay, and then we're going to move down okay. and then up. So carry and lift the entire time here. Okay, take this front foot out to the side, make room for tummy. Okay. Down, down, and up. Okay. Stretching the muscles as they come on down, the internal or the underside muscles, okay? And then when we come on up, everything above starts to firm up, okay? So we're stretching everything underneath, we're firming everything here, and then we're firming everything underneath and allowing everything up top to stretch, okay? So a few more times here. Then I want you to hang out in your lunge. Okay. Get a blanket again. Be honest with yourself here. So hanging out in our lunge or more of a lizard. Get your foot's out to the side. Your hands are on the inside. If you can, come on with your fingertips. Okay, let's do just a little bit of upper body strengthening here. Okay, so going ahead and just really taking your fingers out to a space because everybody's tummy is a different size here. Even if you're rewatching this video, your tummy is a different size than it was yesterday. Okay, so go ahead, go ahead and lower down to those elbows out to the side and lift the torso. Up. Okay, nothing really crazy here. We're not even doing push ups. This is just a little bit of down and upward motion. And then, depends on the tummy of how you move into your downward dog, okay? Keep breathing is rule number one. So whether you kind of lift the hips and then slide this front foot back, keep breathing, okay? Maybe you're able and early in your pregnancy to lift your hips to create that space and then sweep, or sweep that foot back. Okay, just keep breathing and then find a nice downward dog here. 
<sighs> Take your feet as far out to the sides as you need to. <sighs> and knees on down. Hands up to the knees. <clears throat> and other foot forward. Same sequence, other side. I won't talk as much here. Okay. So you can put out to the side a little bit. Hands to your hips. Carry and lift. Okay. Carry and lift. Carry and lift as you come on down. Carry and lift as you rise on up. So just softly moving into your lunge. And out. If you want to make the most of it, so you come on down. And then when you come on up, you can lift the toes and then press out that heel again. Or you can start moving the arms now. Just make sure that you're carrying and lifting. And carrying and lifting. We'll go ahead, come on down to your lunge, your lizard pose. And take that front foot out to the side to make space. And then just little upper body ups and downs here. So being up on your fingertips again. And then down and up. That you can space them out so that you're not putting too much weight into one arm versus the other. And again, move into your downward duck. So keep breathing or sweeping. And rise up into your downward dog. <sighs> Take the rest here. Total body balancer. If the tummy is a little bit bigger, so if you're a little further along in your pregnancy, even if you've had same thing with any blood pressure concerns, just gonna keep the head lifted so that you're looking at the front of your yoga mat. Otherwise, you can just hang that head down, shake no, shake yes. And then prenatal transition out of downward dog into a forward fold. You walk your hands back to your feet. Okay, and we're going to do that again. Okay, again, I want you to get just a little bit of upper body strength here. So now walking your fingertips forward into your extended downward dog. Take a breath. And then walking your hands back, breathing, and then one more time forward. And walking my hands back to the feet. Okay, so some of you might be more into a squat if you're really far in your pregnancy, if little one's about to join us any day, okay? So just take your knees out however far it feels good. Relax your head down or just hang halfway. Hands to your thighs. Lift that head slightly. Come up another quarter of a distance. And go ahead, come all the way up. <sighs> okay. Goddess pose here. Okay. The mother of all prenatal postures. Okay. So very important to have our carry and lift. So turning to the side of your yoga mat or just to the side or turning and facing me. Toes are out, heels are in, and let's kind of squat down a little bit just to make sure that those knees still stay above the ankle or behind the ankle. Okay, so we don't want any of this action. This is, this is not good action right here. 
Okay, so just kind of getting your placement, sweeping a little bit side to side. Like, okay, looking hips, you can do this, right? And then go ahead, come on up. Okay. And then the arms, placement of the arms is going to be up, and then we would come on down. They're going to be out the full post, right? And if you want to, bring your first finger to thumb. Really give somebody to look at. <laughs> and then carry and lift is going to be the whole point and purpose of this practice, okay? So let's go real nice and slow for these first two times. So inhaling on up, so carry and lift, okay? So carry and lift of the muscles as you come on down. Whoa, totally different feeling, right? Okay? Come on up, keep carrying and lifting. Okay, take a breath. Okay, again, carry and lift. Pull them on down. Okay, check with the placements of the knees. Sometimes they can crank in. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so opening up. Okay, and if this is too much for you, please bring your hands to your thighs. Okay, so we're going to add in the lion face. Okay, so lion face again. Build that sense of self-confidence, that strength, creativity, just having fun, making funny faces and sounds with your body, with your face. Again, opening up the throat muscles, really great into um, helping you cultivate your labored breath because you're going to be making all sorts of different funny sounds. This is, again, a nice way to get comfortable with what's happening so you've got this labor delivery like a champ, okay? So, lion face is crossing the eyes, Sticking out the tongue, then making a sound. Okay, so in the face, it looks like this. Okay. And one more time. Okay, so now we do all of that together. This is why this pose is the goddess pose. Okay. So arms up, take that big, beautiful breath in, first finger to thumb. Carry and lift, lion face as you come on down. Okay, we're gonna do this five times. Let's do it three more times. And go ahead, turn the heels out and forward fold. Oh yeah, lots of good work there. Uh, you want to extend, kind of a little bit of a side arc over to one side. You just stretch it up, do whatever you want to here. Oh. And just gonna have a brief moment of fun here. So if you're by yourself, hang out in this posture as long as you want to. But let's go ahead and let's turn the right toes out. Okay, a little half moon posture here. So if you need to, grab your chair or a block. Okay, it's got a nice little warrior stance. A little bit bending into this front knee and then you're going to just kind of hop the back foot. Hold on to that chair and then lift. Come on up into your half moon pose. Flex out through that heel, carry and lift. Then go ahead, find some grace <laughs> as you come on out. Okay? And then let's do that one more time. So bend my front knee, eyes set, where that top or that bottom heel is going to go. And opening up, flexing up to the heel, carry and lift. Find some broad space in the front body as well as in the spine. Lift. And then deeply bend this front knee. Find some grace as you come on down. Other side. So left toes out, front knee bent, okay? 
Nice and on where the hand is going to go. Shift, weight forward, hop or drag. The back foot. And then go ahead, come on up. Carry and lift. Flex through that leg. And come on up. Bend that front knee. Gracefully come out. Okay. So warrior stance. Okay, your legs maybe way farther apart. Okay. Whatever you want to do. And one more time. Moving confidence. Every breath. Turn and lift. Making a big old star. Keep bending that front knee. So before you turning those hip toes forward, heel toe, hands together, and your heart. So thanking the sun and the warmth for being a part of our practice today, and now we get to cool down for a moment. We learn some more lessons. Okay, so let's go ahead, come on down all the way to the floor. And we're going to find a nice recline, laying back posture. Okay, so take whatever blanket or towel that you have, roll it up. And this is going to support your spinal column. So everybody is in different stages, different trimesters, okay, that you would also might have a blanket underneath your head as well, okay? So going ahead, sitting on down. And then you're lying on back. So here's diastasis 101. So if you are in the beginning of your pregnancy, you can come on back, okay? But this is a classic posture for that V point to come up here. So you might want to actually take both knees to the side, lie to the side of your blanket, and then roll back onto your blanket, okay? So again, first trimester, feel free to come on back. Otherwise, second and third trimester, knees to the side. I'm going ahead, coming down, and then rolling on back. Oh. So going ahead and just taking those arms out to the side, bringing the bottoms of the feet together, opening the knees out to the side. This is going to help open up the chest and the shoulders. Again, a safe space to practice. Where the legs are apart, so the sense of vulnerability are here. Okay. And I've been teaching classes long enough that I know that this is probably not comfortable for a healthy majority of individuals. Sometimes you can feel that actual lack of oxygen happening with the weight of the baby. So this is where you can just keep building things up underneath you, underneath your body. So just keep start stacking stuff up. Okay, just keep stacking more stuff. Grab some more pillows underneath your head. Um, you can even take some blocks and some blankets to lift things up into an angle. Or maybe you just need to take some blankets behind you and lean back against a wall, okay? No posture is incorrect. These are all healthy postures, okay? So we just want to get your torso at some sort of an angle here, okay? The other thing is you can choose to do some sort of legs up the wall variation, but you need to make sure that you've got your body off kilter a little bit. So just to show you legs up the wall here, quick, that variation, you would take a blanket, underneath half of your body, okay? So my legs are gonna be here, but you see how my blanket's off to the side? 
Nice and legs up the wall variation of this if you want to go for it. Just laying down. And then as you can see here, only half of my body is on the blanket. Okay, just that tiny little shift of weight can feel much better. So find whatever resting posture feels good. Ahead and relax back, lie back, recline back, whatever it is that feels good for you. And let's invite that cooling breath to come back into our practice. So either through the tongue or through the teeth. And release your breath. Okay, for everyone in the room, for everyone in the sea, resting inside. And we know this practice. Even though it was specific to you, it posed an incredible benefit to your little one inside. All of your moving, all of your breathing. All of those sensations that came up that you met face to face and took a big breath and overcame. I'm setting the relationship for you and the little one. Today's class set the framework for your motherhood. Allows you to find a sense of patience and tolerance within your growing body. You took breaths to find that sense of beauty about you, that glow about you. So turning the corners of the lips on the inside first up and then the lips of the mouth up. And you focus at your third eye space. And picturing yourself as a calm, cool, confident mother. Picturing yourself as a calm, cool, confident mother. 
during labor and delivery. Picture yourself using really big breaths, moaning and groaning your way through your labor and delivery. Knowing that they calm you down, they nurture you through all the waves and sensations. I'm going to take a real big breath and sigh of relief when your little one joins you. You have found some free space within you to welcome your little one in. to appreciate every step of your pregnancy. Knowing again the way that you react or the way that you prepare sets the tone of who you are right now. Because it's the same person who's going to carry forth as a mother. I recommend staying lying down or laid back and taking a hand to your little one and a hand to your own heart. Find that breath connection between the hands, between the little one and your heart. Moving around to be along for the journey. And allow yourself to rest and to visualize your little one inside, resting or swimming around in some great, big, vast, open space inside of you. Visually making space for them to grow and to develop healthily. Thank you for taking time with your practice today. And until we meet again, to you and your little one. Namaste.